What's up guys, this is the Shield Skater and welcome back to the Shit Podcast. Today we are going to have a very special conversation with Kevin Marks. He is the owner and the founder of the Look Back Library, a library that is collecting all the magazines in the skateboarding world. So let's meet Kevin at the Shit Podcast. I hope you enjoy. Hello, hello, this is Kevin Marks from the Look Back Library here in San Diego, California. And you are watching the Shit Podcast. Yeah, let's go for it. What's up, Kevin? How is it going for you? It's going good. Yeah, it's a little early here in San Diego, but I, I, I'm an early bird, so it's no problem. Okay. And are you working right now? Are you at your library? Or I are? am. Okay. So how is the daily routine for you but right there in your, in your library? Well, it's uh, different every day. There is no really daily routine. I, uh, I go back and forth between receiving donations, organizing those donations, fielding questions from the public about where an image is, trying to locate an image in a different magazine. Uh, okay. You know, getting requests like, hey, do you have a January 2004 thrasher you could... Uh, send me um you know so like right now i'm kind of going through my stack of magazines that i've pulled for people that maybe they haven't followed through with a request and just trying to i i'm always playing uh follow-up with with people you know oh, okay. um okay hey i found this magazine you inquired about last month do you want to buy this do you want to do you want me to just send you a digital image what You know, so I do a lot of research for people. I, uh, we are obviously always trying to network and do trades with people in, inter in other countries to get magazines that we don't have. Um, so we do a little uh, background on what exactly it is I do. I know, okay. I don't know if your listeners are really familiar with what, what Look Back Library is. Yeah, what can you say? Can you make like a little introduction about your library? Please? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Kevin Marks. I live in San Diego and for the last six years I've been working on a project called the Look Back Library. That project encompasses several different things. Uh, first of all, we're building out a master archive of every magazine about skateboarding that's ever been made. Um, we do, we build libraries out of the excess magazines that we get donated. We build libraries and place them at skate shops around the world. So we have about 110 libraries in skate shops and skate parks around the world. Um, and then we do exhibits in, you know, in non COVID times, uh, 2015 through 2019, we did uh, uh, nationwide exhibit tours here in the U.S. Uh, of parts of our collection, and those those being on the road allows us to build more libraries and take on more donations. Um, and you know, we run a, a pretty active Instagram account. Please follow us at Look Back Library on Instagram. Uh, where we basically promote a lot, all kinds of print magazines and pictures from those magazines. Um, we work with pros to sign covers to get, uh, you know, if Chris Cole has 12 different magazine covers and I have the opportunity to see him at a skate park here, I try to get, uh, get all of his different covers signed so that they can be used in an exhibit at some point in the future it just makes it a little more special if the magazine is signed um yeah so we basically are building libraries around the world out of 
donated magazines. So we're always trying to get more magazines donated to us to either help those other libraries grow or ideally to help the master archive here in San Diego grow. That's really nice. So uh, the, you were mentioning that, how did you ask for these magazines? How do you find these magazines? Uh, well, you, for them? Um, you know, we have a documentary, like a 20 minute documentary about us on YouTube that kind of explains what we do. It's called a look inside the look back library. You can just look that up on YouTube. Okay. Um, I mean, so part of our Instagram feed is is inquiring and letting people know that we are always looking for magazines. Um, but it's mainly a word of mouth type of thing. When somebody, when a collector or somebody that's had a subscription to the magazines for years finds out about our project, maybe they'll ask a few more questions, but they'll be like, oh, maybe that's why I've been saving the magazines for so long is to give them to you. So, you know, so many collectors, um, haven't maybe haven't even looked at their magazines in 10 or 15 years but they're a part of their life so that it's not something that's easily given up but once yeah. they find out about what we're doing and a big part of our effort is to showcase and share all this knowledge about skateboarding that's been in, uh that's taken place in these magazines and there's there's two or two or three generations of skate current skaters that didn't really grow up learning about skateboarding through the magazines the way I did as an older skateboarder. And so part of our mission is to put those magazines at skate shops where hopefully younger kids and older skaters will alike will both look and be able to appreciate some of that history and, and learn about the his, the rich history of skateboarding. and and see that you know you might think that a kickflip nose slide is a new trick but you know that's been happening since the 90s so yeah. um um yeah there's just so many nuances of of bits of information or you know oh chris cole just got back on zero but oh when was he on zero and you know it's a long long history writing for zero since the uh, early 2000s so um Yeah, really what else nice. That's a really nice cause right there. So, what was your motivation to start with this project? That was in uh -huh. 2015, or right, right. Okay. Um. Well, I grew up in Kansas, which is the cent in the center of the United States, very right. much, uh, very distant from the center of skateboarding, the skateboarding universe. And this was in the 80s. I felt very isolated it being in Kansas, which was very much focused on football and organized sports and skateboarding was looked very much down upon. And so my my subscriptions to Thrasher and Trans World and later Power Edge and Big Brother were my links to the skateboard world. So I Those those magazines were very important to me, and I I kept them, and it, that was kind of the beginning of my collection, my personal collection. And then, um, basically from that point on, I went to college in the '90s, and then started working in the skateboard industry here in California in 1995, and uh, kept up those magazine subscriptions and. I worked as the international sales manager for Foundation and Toy Machine Skateboards in the mid 90s. And in that role, I was able to get familiarized with a lot more of the international magazines, the German magazines, the Spanish magazines, the English magazines, the French magazines. And um, and so that, that exposure kind of widened my perspective on, man, there's every, every industrialized country has had a skateboard magazine at one point or another and that's so awesome and and getting to see those magazines and 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 interact with the people that make those magazines was very inspiring and um, and over the years i've written articles for trans world and thrasher and slap and trans world business journal and and so i i, I got to a point with my life where i was wanting to do something different 
I wanted to still work in skateboarding, but not really have to sell anything. So I, uh, I just kind of fell into it really, you know, my having had this long history of collecting magazines personally kind of led to, uh, led to me coming up with this idea. And, and part of it was sparked from my involvement in a nonprofit that I sat on the board of directors for in Colorado called Launch Community Through Skateboarding. That organization had a big library that part of one of my pet projects for the organization was to utilize my contacts in California with the publishers and to, to find, you know, to, to more thoroughly find magazines that that library needed. And that led to partnerships with the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. But uh, it, it is needed a lot of patience to do this. So are you also a skateboarder? Did you escape? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still skate. Yes. Okay. And yeah, I've been skating since 1986 and okay. have maintained a, a presence on my board ever since then. And I, I was just up at a, a ramp this weekend, uh, skating it a Saturday and Sunday. And, um, you know, I don't skateboard as much as I did when I was your age, Felipe, but <laughs> I can, I still enjoy a good, good mini ramp and a good, a fun skate park. So, um, I never, I, I'll be 50 next year. And I never would have thought when I was your age that I'd still be skating when I was getting near, near to 50. So I'm very thankful that I can still ride my skateboard. I have, I have my injuries, uh, you know, and with the pains, of my knees and my ankles sometimes, oh. but for the most part, I'm, I can still roll. I can still do some tricks and I'm grateful for that. And you are breeding skateboarding with your cars and with your skating. That's really nice yeah. that you've never quit this. All right. Yeah. And what, what can you notice about the skate community nowadays and the moment maybe when you started to skate in the nineties, uh, if we can make a comparison. What, what did well, you mean about the skate skateboarding, community? Skateboarding now is much more accepted by the general population and by parents and even by municipalities. You know, the, the skate parks are, are continually being integrated into parks and recreation plans. And, you know, we had to fight to get skate parks built in the late 80s and early 90s, you know, and... And people were, you know, routinely harassing us in the streets, especially in Kansas. When I went to school in Colorado, it was kind of the same thing where, you know, people people tend to make fun of or openly uh, discriminate against things they don't quite understand. And skateboarding was very, very new to a lot of the places where I was spending time in the 80s and 90s. So um, you don't see that as much now. It's like, you, you know, as a skateboarder in the 80s, I very much felt like an outcast and like a discard from society. But now skateboarders are seen, I think, in high schools and, and colleges as very much uh, a co cool, you know, very, very, uh, avant-garde and ahead of the times, you know, as far as fashion and um, culture and everything. So, yeah, so there's, it's been a big shift from, from what, how I think skateboarders are perceived now to from when I started uh, skating back yes. in the 80s. Okay. And that's a positive, positive, uh, you know, change. And it's, it's, we love seeing all the different skate parks popping up and, and how, you know, skateboarders as a population are counted. You know, we're being, I would, we're on some levels we're being catered to, you know, the, all we, we, we get asked for our opinions on what do you want in this skate park? And, um, yeah, so everything's, everything's moving in a positive direction as far as I can tell. 
Yeah, for sure. The, the support is coming and skate, this community is growing and it's yeah. being more commercial, but yeah, pros and cons, but it's, it's really nice. And is there something that you miss from the past, from the skating the past? What, what do you think that you say, oh, I miss, I miss when, when this happened? Don't well, um, you know, skateboarding now takes in all kinds, right? Like, uh, when, when I grew up skating, skateboarding was like 100% of my identity. And oh, okay. if I saw a guy that I'd never seen before at the grocery store that had bands on and a little ollie hole on his, pet, on his shoes, we had an instant bond. And... Um, You know, now with the prevalence of skate, everybody wearing skate shoes, you don't necessarily know if that guy in line at the grocery store in front of you actually skates or not. But, um, you know, so I think because we were so shunned by society that there was a maybe a tighter bond between skateboarders back in the 80s, which I, I kind of miss, but um but it's you know it's not that big of an issue but uh you know now you know now you can skateboard and you can play soccer yes or, or you know you can have multiple interests it's like kids today no don't necessarily um hinge their identity on one activity the way the way i did as a kid like i Sure, I had a, a BMX bike, but I, I identified as a, as a skateboarder. You know, I spent majority of my time skateboarding. Once I found skateboarding, I no longer was interested in playing basketball for my school or soccer in the summertime or whatever. And, and uh, you know, things that my mother tried to expose me to as a child, it was like, I don't want to spend every, every free moment out on my skateboard with my friends yes yes of course and, yeah i know what you mean okay and what do you think about social media about this phenomenon right now do you think that it's a well, great tool yeah yeah for me especially that is instagram is the primary way that we interact with the public we have a website I have email, but, um, oh, okay. That's nice. But, but, uh, social media allows us a direct link to, uh, our fans or the people that support us. So, um, just giving you a little tour of the main, That the is... main, the main archive here. These are all English and French and German magazines here. Nice. Like this grouping right here is all the trans worlds that were ever made. All the thrashers are right through here. Wow. The big brothers are, there's only 105 big brothers. It only takes up that much space right there. Okay. We got the skateboarders up top there, the slaps there, the skateboard mag here. That's really, really nice. We got all kinds of books over here about skating. Zines here. Okay. Yeah. So. A lot of styles. And yeah. Are, comics. What about comics? I wonder. Are the, there's there... a few comics. Yeah. There's this one called uh, Shred. That's about a skateboarder. There's, you know, Thrasher made nine issues of comics in the 80s. Santa Cruz, Jim Phillips did this one. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so there's this one called Road Rash. Here's one of the Thrasher comics. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. yeah, there's 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 a handful of different comics out there. Um, and what about literature about uh, that are are there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a handful of books. I'm actually Walker Ryan just just made this book called Top of Mason, which okay. I recently read. I read it in eight days. It was a really quick read, and it's about 
It's kind of about his experience as a man am in San Francisco, but it it tackles a lot of current issues and I found it to be just a fantastic work of uh, literature on his part. Okay, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, as time goes on, more and more skateboarders will write about what they know. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Here, I can give you another a little more. So, so wow. this room is one of everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, like, then we have VHS up here. Wow, so big. So those are video magazines or video parts or? Uh, well, vid just videos, you know, the, the Thrasher videos, the Spitfire videos. Okay. All the, all the VHS copies. We got DVDs over here, Alien Workshop, Shake Junt, Blind, wow. Stereo, Enjoy, Transworld videos. Nice. So this room up here, this is the main archive. Okay. This where is it's main. one of everything. And then we go down into this room. All right. Oh my God. And it's more big. Do you know Diego Buccieri? Yeah. That's yeah, Diego sure. on the cover of Slap. Um, yeah, Juice Magazine. Yeah, so that's ah. just a little tour. A very big collection right there. I really yeah see it's important that we don't like i don't ever really look at it this as my collection felipe i okay. really try to look at this as a public resource like i'm building this i'm kind of the caretaker of this collection but i don't i don't look at it as i'm the owner of it okay you understand like because so much of this came to us through donations from skaters from all over the world that I I really I really don't like the concept of ownership I like the concept of a community resource and that you know that's so like when somebody emails me or asks me a question through Instagram about a certain issue you know then I can I can go okay let me let me pull you think it's in 2004 with we'll full We'll pull all these and I'll see if I can find it, you know, and okay. And, you know, if I'm people are in San Diego, they're welcome to make an appointment and come over and look through through magazines. If they uh, if they're trying to search for something, I at some point I want uh, graduate students in architecture or sociology to be able to come and use this resource if they have a, a specific skateboard related uh, uh, paper to work on, on architecture or uh, civil civil engineering or what, whatever it might be. Um, so, you know, as, as more and more of the magazines go out of business, I feel like I've kind of stepped into the role of, uh, of a caretaker and archivist and historian that is going to keep a record of everything that was ever made about skateboarding in the print world and can share that with other people either through our exhibits or through allowing people to come over and look through the mags or just by sharing certain selections of things through our instagram That's really nice. The cause that you are leading right now, it's very supportive for the skate community. And yeah, thank so you, you, you in Colombia. Yeah. What magazines have are you familiar with in Colombia? Because I'm not really sure we have any from Colombia. I know we have a few from Chile. No, in, in Colombia, we just we just have a, a, um, a magazine that is called Vive Skateboarding. But more okay. than that, we just know the mainstream skate magazines, the Trasher yeah. magazine, Transworld, um, and yeah, basically the, the, the more the most famous. But yeah. yeah. So, you know, we have all of the Thrashers, we have all the Transworlds, we have all the Big Brothers, but where we really need help is 
from people in Brazil, people in Argentina, people in Panama, anywhere outside the U.S. where a magazine has been made. Maybe, you know, Brazil has quite a few magazines, but some of them didn't only last, were only in the 80s, you know? So, like, yeah. we need help from people outside the U.S. to send us magazines to help us grow our international collection. For sure. This is a yeah. very good cause. Okay. So, so yeah so if you have magazines or extras of doubles of certain issues and you're watching this and you would like to help contribute to the archive direct message me or email me at kevin at lookbacklibrary.org um yeah we'd love to hear from you and we can figure out a way if you want to Maybe we can trade magazines or if you can just send us some or know somebody that's coming to the U.S. that you could send them with, you know, postage is all, you know, the cost of postage is always a, a hindrance for us. So oftentimes we'll try to use couriers, you know, and if you know somebody that's a skater that's going to come to the San Francisco, if they can bring the magazines to San Francisco, we can get them down here to San Diego easy enough if we can just get them in the country by somebody that's flying in the in for a skate trip or something okay let's make this happen all right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's nice and how is the way i wonder how is the way to interact with you if maybe i am looking for a magazine and, and I, i want that magazine i i i, I have to buy it with you or or, or how well we can it? do trades you know you can you can if we have extras you know there's certain magazines that are so rare that i wouldn't ever sell out of the collection you know but there's as you saw when we were in that one room certain issues we have 10 or 12 of and so those issues are ones that if you're looking for your first magazine from 2003 or something you know we can okay. work out a deal to where i can sell you a copy or if If you have a, a Colombian magazine, you want to mail, you know, mail in, we can work out a trade. So um, that's yeah. kind of the way we work it now. Okay. Okay. You know, I have to, I have to manage a very limited resource in the magazines that we do have trying to project into the future. How many libraries are we going to build? And can we spare a copy of this magazine that someone is inquiring about, you know? Yeah. If, if it's Louis Barletta that needs a copy of a magazine that he lost in a fire that he's on the cover of, then I'm going to do whatever I can to get give him that copy of the magazine. But if it's just a, a guy in South Carolina that wants to find his, his first magazine... Hopefully, you know, I, I can, we, we're, we work with people, you know, yeah. it's nice to be able to sell a magazine that that money allows us to buy another magazine or pay for shipping to, to do a trade in, in, uh, France or something. So, uh, yeah. So just, if you're interested in a magazine, send me an email or a direct message on Instagram and we'll all let, I, I can very easily tell you, yes. I have a spare copy of that or no, I will keep an eye out for that issue. But at this time we don't have one that we're, we're able to let go of. Okay. So yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm very easy to communicate with on email or direct message. I, I look forward to, uh, to talking to people and finding out, I might find out about a magazine and, uh, Argentina that I never knew about, you know, like, um, I'm always hungry for, for new information about the magazines. That's cool. Here's something that's kind of fun. This is a, an Omar Salazar trans world cover wow. that I was able to get a print from the guy that shot the photo that's here wow. in the front of the house. That's really so nice. Too much glare on that. Yeah. And what do you think? I wonder, what do you think about the video magazines? Um, nowadays are more 
are more functional than the printed skate magazines. What do you prefer? A printed skate magazine or I prefer print. I mean I okay. prefer watching videos. I like I like watching videos too, but I prefer I prefer being able to turn the page of a magazine yeah. and get oh. stoked on a new issue. You know, the this oh, where's the there's Chad Muska, Temecula, you know, and there's Hubba Hideout and there's Blaze Bluin. Yeah. There's Brian Schaefer from skate park in Tampa, you know, who's in a Spitfire ad back in 1997. And yeah, it's, I, yeah. I just love, you know, again, it, it, what it comes down to a lot, Felipe is, is my, my background and how did I first start learning about skateboarding? And it was through the magazines. And so that is always going to hold a very special place in my heart. If oh, I was 14 true. years old, and and always grew up with an iPad or an iPhone and only learned about skateboarding through videos and you know it would be a whole different set of nostalgia so um, for me the magazines are are most ideal okay that's nice yeah. what would be your recommendation to start with a video magazine with a video magazine no with a magazine with a skate magazine for all the people who want to start because you have the experience <laughs> what would be your well advice? i've never ran a magazine I, you know uh i yeah. i have a little bit of experience making zines but uh you know if you're a photographer or know a photographer and you are good at graphic design and have have some programs on your computer that can lay out i a magazine start start and just do photocopy zines you know that's how low card started was just being photocopied the first 10 or 12 issues of low card or just just run on a on a photocopy machine and that grew into a printed magazine that came out you know every few months and um and you know with the advent of how good copy machines are now and how easy it is to learn uh, the the graphic design programs on computers it's like it's all everything is at your fingertips for the most part and it just takes the willingness to try and the, and have uh, the motivation to to put something out and to showcase your skate scene and send those zines to other people in other cities or other countries and and uh, you know sh be proud of your scene and showcase it yeah for sure thank you for that all right kevin this was uh that was it for today i I'm really appreciate the cause that you are leading as i was saying and let's make this grow because I haven't seen a project like this before, and it's, it's very <laughs> important to preserve the skateboarding history. You are doing yeah, that. So I agree. A very nice cause right there. Thank you for that. And thank you for this conversation. Thank you for being All part right. of this, this shit podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this shit podcast. All <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, I will I will write you on Instagram to to keep to keep um yeah sharing ideas and, and look what we can do all right so yeah so this this will be a a podcast that i can share with people does yeah it take you sure. a few weeks to put it together or does it go up today or exactly we are going to edit maybe this week or maybe the another one but yeah this is going to be a video on youtube and also on instagram so you can share <laughs> we are awesome. going to support each other all right all right all right let's stay in touch Let's do it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else, Felipe? No, just skate. Please skate. Never <laughs> quit skating, all right? <laughs> uh, all right, man. Thank Have a you. good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, guys, this was Kevin Marks. I really enjoyed this conversation. He is very wise for skateboarding. He is a very passionate skateboarder, and I like that. And yeah, that was it for today, guys. Leave us your comment down below in order to know your opinion about the look by library, and of course, about the vision and perspective of Kevin Marks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe, 
Alright, now let's go with Skate Tag.